Welcome back, nerds. Fino here with a guide for Summer Yume Ren. She's a free four-star lancer introduced in Servant Summer Camp, and while she's married to an ancient quick fossil, and also Scotty, you'll find she's surprisingly robust. Let's take a look at her kit. First up, we have Summer Incarnated Elemental. It's a five-turn guts on a six-turn cooldown, meaning you can pop it pretty much with impunity. You just wait a turn and try again. It also revives her with 5k health, a very substantial amount. Though as you'll see, she's gonna need it. Summer Incarnated Elemental also operates as an NP gain steroid that gives even more on sunny and waterside terrain. The terrain effects are situational, but the base effect will help you try and cycle her Noble Phantasm. Senpai's second skill is Conqueror's Princess. It's a targeted charge capping at 20%. It also taunts Consort Yu. Now, she's not exactly a beefcake, so Yu is gonna get messed up. Even when you're fighting with defensive class advantage, a lot of boss enemies can devastate your main attacker with repeated hits. Obviously, you have your generous guts to fall back on, but Consort Yu doesn't get any benefits from being at low health. She's not an enmity attacker, believe it or not. It's a weird drawback, though there are ways of exploiting it. Firstly, targeted evasions and invulns can allow Consort Yu to intercept single-target Noble Phantasms. Secondly, the battery effect is targetable, and in combination with her third skill, she can act as a disposable support. By using the spare copies from next year's rerun, you can even make a series of variable-level esports senpais to guarantee she doesn't survive whatever attacks are coming along. Pison's third and most powerful skill is that bikini, holy shit! Dance of Bygone Days is a personal quick and party crit buff. Both effects are multi-turn, and in combination with the usual backup for a quick attacker, they'll make her rip enemies apart. The ally effect is more relevant to esports builds where you run her with a different attacker. But if you prefer your senpais taking center stage, Concert U has quite the showstopper. Her Noble Phantasm is Anti-Fling Rondo. It's a single-target quick attack that deals additional damage to male enemies. On top of this, it burns and curses its target for three turns. The debuffs are tied to Overcharge, so you generally won't see it beyond a paltry 500 damage per effect. You've got a decent number of male archers you can accost with the Pison Pounder, but even as a generic beat stick, you'll find Concert U a generally superior option to her most direct competitor, Lancer Medusa. The latter suffers from debuff reliance, a terrible attack buff, and being a gotcha servant. Unless you're already heavily invested into a full power Medusa, Concert U is going to be the more efficient option by far. Of course, Medusa isn't her only competitor. There's also Kagetora, another free lancer, the one that operates under the Arts Umbrella. The unfortunate reality is that while both have their strengths enhanced by their respective supports, only Kagetora has her weaknesses covered. That's just the power of Castoria, really. But as far as beat sticks go, you can run either or. Concert U has that anti male damage and a better stat line than Kagetora, so why limit yourself? For craft essences, you have two lines of thought. For main attacker builds, you want your typical charge less damage options. Traces of Christmas's past, Golden Sumo, Black Grail, there's Honey Lake, which gives Invon Pierce an extra damage against burned enemies. I'd only run that if you're willing and able to NP on turn 1, or you have burn command codes. Finally, there's Knights of Marines, which has 60% charge when limit broken. That means that between her battery and a pen skill, Concert Yu can use her NP unassisted on turn 1. This lets you double up with Scotty on turn 2, regardless of your opening hand. Unfortunately, Knights of Marines is a 5-star gotcha CE from all the way back in Summer 1. So while I have a billion copies thanks to the Squirturia disaster, it won't be an option for most of you. For Sudoku Senpai builds, you're not restricted to taunt effects. This allows her to run all kinds of utility tailored towards your main attacker. There are on-death charges like Merciless One and Cam Lan, debuffs like 500 Year Obsession, stardoms like Hide Hunter, and other entry effects like Ox Demon King for Buster allies. As for command codes, I'll note that Moon Goddess in Love gives anti-male damage if you want to double up on that niche. Otherwise, it depends on how much you want to commit to Consort Yu as one of your account's major attackers, or how much you want to commit to Honey Lake. Overall, Summer Yume Ren is a surprisingly robust freebie, and as long as you can find a Scotty to run her with, she'll do some serious work. She's a functional main attacker that'll dumpster archers and berserkers, all the more if they're male. And if you need a sacrificial buffer, her built-in taunt removes the need for rare, expensive, or inconvenient CEs that accomplish that same function. If you're a quick holdout, she's pretty solid. I guess once quick became off meta, they were a lot more willing to put out quick welfares that supersede old and outdated options, including gotcha servants. That trend is going to culminate in the release of Kichi Hogan, a legitimate looping assassin. Concert U may fare worse than Kagetora on the strength of their respective supports, but you should definitely get her unlocked and fully NP'd. You never know when the meta's gonna shift in the future. If we get some kind of super quick support, like an Okita Soji caster, then who knows? Pison may dethrone her rival at last. Thanks for watching. Like if you enjoyed this video, subscribe for more, and come watch me on Twitch where I'll be rolling for my final set of Raiden Murasakis. Oh, I guess Abigail too. 
Tomoe's not gonna get in my way this time. Twitch.tv slash Tyson. I typically start around 3 p.m. See you there.